Welcome everyone, we're back and I'm going to talk to you today about finding out where and why uh, your database is suffering from performance problems. So a lot of times when you're opening up your favorite database tool, it's because your pager's gone off or, oh gosh, we're not in the 80s anymore. Uh, it's because someone sent you a message on Slack or a tweet that says, hey, the application isn't responding like it should. We're going to blame the database because, of course, you always blame the database. And so you need to go in and see what's what. And I'm going to show you a screen that we built in SQL Developer built specifically for that. Hey, if you are new to the channel, uh, my name is Jeff Smith. I'm the product manager for SQL Developer and several of other database tools at Oracle. Uh, I have lots and lots of videos. that are anywhere from two to three minutes, uh, tip and trick base to full hour long death by PowerPoint full product walkthroughs. So uh, feel free to peruse those, send me questions, um, that Jeff Smith on Twitter. And you can also find everything I talk about here in blog format on thatjeffsmith.com. Okay, so let's jump into the tool. So here I have SQL developer. Someone said the database is misbehaving. Where do I go? What do I want to um, open up to see what's up? So I'm going to ask that you click on this DBA item in the view menu. And you might not be a DBA, but don't freak out. It's going to be OK. I will not get you in trouble, I promise. And that's going to give you an empty panel. You know, big deal. That's not doing much. Um, what you need to do first is add some connections. So we don't assume that you're going to be doing DBA type stuff on all of your database connections you work with in SQL Developer. So you can come in here and add connections as necessary. You have as many as you want. And this tree works basically the same as the main tree does. So when I expand this, it'll make a connection. And then I have quite a few items to look at. And the one that we're going to look at for, you know, to show me where it hurts stuff is going to be on the status container. And then underneath that, we have an instance viewer. So let's open up the instance viewer. Now this is going to fire off a whole ton of queries on your database. So if your database is all running pretty slow, this might make it hurt a little bit more, but it's going to get you the information you need to figure out what's what. So uh, this screen is not ideal. So let me show you a few tricks. I can right click on the instance viewer and I can say float. I can resize it to full screen and I can click this button right here that says zoom to fit, which it pretty much did that for me automatically. Now, for each set of panels here, I have one or more queries firing off on the back end of the database to bring this information back to me. And these boxes or these graphs or these charts and these reports are refreshing at different rates. So for example, I think for sessions, we're hitting that every few seconds, and I can see the breakdown of who's connected. And maybe if you saw a bunch of block sessions here, that would indicate that some applications are being held up because maybe a, a table uh, is being rebuilt or an index is, you know, something is creating contention and, and that would show up here. We look to be all good at the moment here. Uh, below, we have a breakdown of your wait events. So um, going on right now from the wait events, what, what's the breakdown of, of wait events and what's causing issues? Um, now, if you're using Enterprise Manager or if you've used Enterprise Manager in the past, the uh, color codes that we're using here break down to the same color codes for wait event classes you've seen at Enterprise Manager for years. And I'm not going to explain all of these um, boxes for you. Uh, Generally, in my experience, bad things are happening in the database because someone's managed to get a bad SQL statement into the database and the optimizer can't cope. So um, by default, we show you here um, the top SQL statements ranked in terms of CPU seconds descending. So here's a query that's spent, oh gosh, more than a minute in CPU time, which CPU time is not the same as clock time. If I right click, on this, I can say, show me the, um, the details. 
And I get a couple of warning messages up front. So let me explain this to you. Uh, some of the pages on this report we're about to open will touch the diagnostic pack and the tuning pack. So if you're not licensed for those, you can click yes to this. But I don't want you to click past the explain plan page. Um, this page is free. So here's a formatted uh, copy of the SQL statement. Here's the plan below. Uh, now, if you have the diagnostic pack licensed, I can click on bind variables. And this will go through the active session history. And I can also go through SQL lapse time um, to see how this query has ran in the past. Now, if I click on SQL tuning advice, this will run on the spot an ad hoc SQL tuning advisor job or task as they're called. And it will bring back advice for how to fix um, the SQL statement. I should say um, that the main page here, this does not require any packs. So you can run this on Express Edition. You can run it on a PDB. You can run it on a container. You can run it in the cloud if you've got access. Uh, you can run it on-prem. You can run it on Docker. Uh, Standard Edition, uh, Edition 2, uh, Enterprise Edition, Exadata, doesn't matter. This is just going against the free data dictionary views. It's not so you drill down into the top SQL and potentially click on the um, execution history or the uh, tuning advisor tasks uh, that you would hit the tuning and diagnostic pack features. All right, um, there's some other drill downs here, but before I show you those, uh, let's toggle over to memory storage. And this is just going to give me more information in terms of I.O., you know, what's happening in terms of memory, SGA, storage. Now, some of these boxes, they don't need to hit the system every five seconds, you know, because changes aren't going to be happening that drastically there, hopefully for storage, unless you're doing a data load. Um, it's not going to change. Uh, but I think so we query that every five minutes, maybe every two minutes. This is all configurable for how often that we um, hit the page. Uh, if we double click on one of these, uh, you can see the report behind. So if you just want to see the raw data and where we're getting that data uh, to, to populate those charts, um, double click. I'm going to dock this back into the main panel. And I'm going to show you that this is not magic. And let's close this window now. So the uh, panel I have below is the log panel. And on the log panel, there's something called statements. And this shows all of the queries that we send to the database um, to do the work that you're asking us to do. So if you're curious what uh, privileges you need, what objects um, you need to be able to see to get the screen to work, you can open up this panel and you can see that we're touching V dollar process, V dollar session, lots of V dollars. Um, we assume you're a DBA when you open this panel and you probably have select catalog or the DBA role that would allow you to see everything. Uh, if you are lacking execute privs on some packages or select privs on some data dictionary views, when you open the screen, these panels will just be blank or grayed out. So they point or come back. You know it's a privilege issue. And if you want to know why it's not working, open up the view log panel and see which queries down here are failing. OK, uh, just really quickly, we'll talk about preferences. Actually, it's not preferences. Apologies. If you go back to the view menu and we pull up metrics console with the instance viewer open these are the different queries that we're running to populate the different panels 
it should be somewhat, uh, so here's one called top SQL by CPU. This is running every 10 seconds, it looks like. So if I want to change that, so if I want to change that, I can just click on edit and give it a different value. So if I want, if I have extremely volatile database and I, I want it to run every three seconds, I would just change this to three here. I can also disable these too. So if I don't want an entire panel to paint because it's hurting the database so much and I just want to concentrate on I or wait events, I could turn all of these on or off. So that's pretty much it for the instance viewer. We have tons of other screens in here in this DBA panel, uh, but this is the one that I go to for when someone tells me, hey, the database hurts, but I can't tell you exactly why. Um, and this will just kind of give you a couple of things to cue in on. Thanks everyone for your time and happy SQL diving out there.